Here in Hawaii, food is a big part of our culture. It brings us together, it's comforting, and when it's good, you can't get any better. Here at FET in downtown Honolulu, Chef Robin Maii is trying to bring all of those feelings about food into one place, and it's paying off. In 2022, she was named one of the best chefs in the country, but as she tells us, her path to success wasn't a simple one. My journey with cooking began at home. Um, both my parents are very, very good cooks. They have different styles. My mom is a recipe hugger, so she likes to clip recipes. We grew up with Gourmet Magazine and Bon Appetit and Sunset and all those great magazines where you clip the recipes and you put it in a binder. My dad likes to be inspired by recipes, but he's much more like free flowing and kind of just creative in the kitchen. I loved cooking from a very young age, but Having Asian parents, the idea of pursuing a career in culinary arts just wasn't in the cards for me until, I, until my senior year when I really started thinking about like, oh, oh no, what am I gonna do? But I saw a brochure in the career office for culinary school and I, it really resonated. I thought, oh, I would love to do that. That sounds great, that sounds fun. Of course, I had to tell my parents that I wanted to go to culinary school and they weren't happy. Um, and then they said, well, you need to find a way to fund it yourself. So um, I started doing research and then quickly realized how expensive culinary school is. And so I came back home to go to Kapi'olani Community College, um, where the program is very, very good and very affordable. And I was so captivated by the content, everything, from the sanitation to garmage to Asian cookery to international cookery, to, and then to the, all the, everything with the baking and the pastry. All of it was really, really fun and interesting. I went to grad school in New York City in food studies thinking that I would become a food writer or I would become a restaurant critic or write articles for Gourmet Magazine and Bon Appetit. During that time, I met my husband and um, we fell in love over food and, and wine and cocktails and and um, I think most important, entertaining friends at home. We just loved gathering our closest friends and family and cooking for them and having sort of very, very relaxed, languid meals at our house. And so it was during that time where we really started talking about opening a restaurant. Robin and I came up with the idea for FET. It had been sort of uh, baking and congealing in our minds for a period of time. Uh, it was sort of loosely based on dinner parties that we threw, restaurants that we worked at. The concept of having a dinner party or a fete, inviting people in, but also based around a neighborhood place that we wanted to have food, drink, cocktails, wine, all that centered around whatever's going on in your day. Opening up fete was a very sort of not straight path. When you're raised with Asian parents, with when education's like paramount, right? So like, get a good education, get a good job, get married, have kids, buy a house, and then and then it just continues. But that didn't happen that way. <laughs> Life never happens the way that you that you want it to happen. We really, really wanted to have a family, and we weren't able to. So um, once we decided to move on from from having our own children, really the idea of FET became like more viable and um, important to us. FET is a new American restaurant. We like to source as many local ingredients as possible, but we also very much treat the restaurant like our house. We cook as if you are coming over to the house. Um, we cook what we crave and what we love to eat, and we hope that when people come, that they enjoy it as much as we do. In my mind, what separates us from other restaurants, I would say the collection of our crew. Uh, we empower people to do the things that they're good at. And the thing that Robin and I, and then also Chef Emily, try and work with is finding that, that right spot for each person to shine. It, it's rare a restaurant has 
two partners who are working a lot, like Robin and I do, but also have Emily, who is such an integral part of our system, who is of like mindset of that it has to be done right. You know, it doesn't have to be done perfect. You just have to try the best you can. And to see them work together, uh, it's almost like they got two mamas in the house, I think is what my wife will say sometimes. I always tell people, in order to aptly describe my relationship and friendship and love for Emily Gucci, we need a podcast. It gives me chicken skin, it's quite magical. It actually makes me very emotional talking about it. Our relationship and how much she means to, to me and Chuck and also the restaurant and also the staff. It, it's, it's, it's uncanny and it's, it's like, it's really, really, um, it's kismet. It really is. So uh, I love her and um, I mean, even when I say those words, it doesn't even feel like it has enough weight for how, how special she is to, to me and to the restaurant. I loved Robin when I first met her. You know, after, it's been um, six years, and I think definitely we can finish each other's sentences, and she knows when the cooks say something that I didn't actually say that, that she knows what I was going to say or what I really meant. One of the reasons why Emily and I bonded over working together in the kitchen is this idea of mentoring people because I think that we have a lot to share. And it always really just rubbed me the wrong way when chefs would say, well, I, I'll share the recipe with you, but then I'm gonna have to kill you. Because I just don't think that that is what makes good cooking. There's no such thing as a perfect recipe. It really does take care, dedication, presence to cook well on a daily basis. And I think that people who covet and, and really sort of like believe that this one recipe is so special that they can't share it with anyone, well, what's the point of cooking them? Really, what, what is the point? So for us, it's about developing cooks who are curious and who really, really, really love the process. My favorite part of working here is the people that I work with. It's like family. It's nice to be able to help the young gen new generation and teach them new skills. So that's really exciting. There's always something, there's something new every day. The James Beard Award basically is a, an award that is a, a um, recognition of culinary skill set but also it, it recognizes uh, community outreach, it recognizes programs you have going for in your restaurant. It's more holistic than just a good job on the food. So in, in 2022, we were super surprised to be nominated. I texted my wife, I called her, texted her, called her, no response. So when I got to work, I walked downstairs, I look at my wife and I, uh, I'm, I'm like about to burst inside. And I was like, did you not see your phone? And she's like, what happened? What's going on? And she thought something bad was happening. So I was like, no, we got nominated for James Beard Award. And she looks at me sort of matter of factly like, okay, I got a lot of prep to do. I got to go back to work. When we got nominated for a semifinalist, we were just over the moon. We thought like, okay, that's like enough. Like that's enough. Like we were so, so blown away just by getting, the, getting to the semifinals. And then when we got to the finals, I just, it was like almost too much. It was too much. I was like, okay, this is like for sure enough. So we went to Chicago just sort of as a big celebration for the restaurant. And so when we actually did win, that's why I still have, I, I still don't know what to do. Like, and so when people say congratulations and I say thank you and they're like looking at me and I'm like, we're super happy, we're super excited. But um, yeah, I still, I still think it's amazing. I think, I think I'll always think it's amazing. And one of these days, the true weight and gravity of it all will finally sink in and um, I don't know. I don't know. It's so, it's so crazy. It's so crazy. We're so happy. Yeah. I look up to my wife in so many ways. She is an organizer. She is a master of engineering and figuring things out, putting things together. She's a master of internal, internalization to be a better 
person to manage things better. But seeing her growth, uh, I feel is has been super rewarding. And for her to win the James Beard Award, I can't tell you how many times I cried about that. I was just so happy for her. But just having this restaurant, having fat, and and seeing that person who comes in who enjoys their their food and their drink and the the, the responses we get from our guests, that to me is the biggest reward. We feel very, very privileged every day to do what we do. Every day, even if I'm tired, even if I'm like angry because of something dumb, as soon as like I come to work, I quickly sort of snap out of it like that because I realize how lucky we are to be doing what we're doing.